you hear a noise. Ascending stone in your back pocket, in, in, in one of the secret compartments that you keep, uh, a small sending stone is I'll retrieve it. Uh, as you hold it aloft and move it so that it can create noise, uh, you hear a voice say, this is Talon to Wingspan, Talon to Wingspan. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I am in position and I am reporting that Egghead is preparing to break curfew and sneak out of the house to go to a party. And you said that she's not allowed to leave, but she's about to leave, and she has no idea that I'm here. She has no idea that I can see her. She's about to do it. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> this is this is Kurt. <laughs> This is your son, son. Kier. Yeah. This is your son, Kier. Uh, um, he's using code names for Talon, you himself Talon. and your daughter that you have never heard before. Um, they change a lot. The code names change a lot depending on what he thinks is cooler that week. Um, awesome. And you are standing in a room with a dead body, listening to your son describe <laughs> your daughter about to head out to one of what would have to presumably be many parties happening on the eve of the replenishment. Sure. Uh, Talon too. This is. Wingspan. <laughs> Say again, this is Wingspan. Communication's a little, a little shoddy. Wow. Did you say Egghead is snuck out? Affirmative. I see her, she's, uh, she <laughs> snuck downstairs to the kitchen and she got a bottle normally reserved for uh, Wingspan and Clear Eye and, <laughs> uh, <laughs> And I saw her take a swig from it, and then she made a face like it was really bad. And then she took another swig from it, and then made a face like it was even worse. I don't know what it's about, but I know she's up to no good. This is very good, Talon too. very good. No. You are in no way to engage with Egghead. She's dealing in dark magic. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Keep an eye, but keep your distance. I'll be, I kind of look over my shoulder at the door <laughs> in the room. I'll be home when I can. I, uh, I love you very much. Is that, uh, uh, oh, I love you too, Dad. Sorry, I thought we were still doing some No, no, Talon too, Talon too. <laughs> keep, keep, keep objective, uh, keep objective professionalism. Yeah. No, no telling who oh, could be watching. Cop, copy that, Wingspan, and, and, and I, and me too. Me too. Thanks, son, I'll, I'll be home later. Okay, do you, do you know if Mom's supposed to come home tomorrow, or is she gonna miss the whole, is she gonna miss the whole replenishment? Uh, I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. She, I think she's gonna try and, and make it back by, Tomorrow, your mom's a very busy scientist, brilliant woman, as you know. Um, but it, you know, she she works at her own pace. But I, I'm sure if she can be here, she will be. Affirmative. We'll keep an eye to the skies, Pop, and I, I, we we span, uh, and I'll and over and I'll tail Egghead and make sure that no. Funny business. Okay, uh, uh, copy that, Talon, too. Don't get, uh, again, too close and stay away from the evil, dark magic uh, uh, liquor, uh, uh, drinks that she's. Uh, Good Dad, I already collected a vial and I stored it in my evidence locker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Talon, too, where would this evidence locker be located? The evidence locker is in a secret compartment under my bed. Uh, no, I. It's in a different place. Don't worry. Uh, it is nothing. It's nothing else is under my bed. I have to go. I gotta go real quick. But I'll talk to you soon. All right. Talk to you too, uh, Talon. Too. Over and out. Over and out. It's actually just over. But you know, it's just over. <laughs> <laughs> out. It's a snitch. <laughs> and, you're, and you're a big fan of that. <laughs> yeah. My son's loyal. My son's loyal. <laughs> you know, you know who's loyal. <laughs> Pure gold, shining brighter than the sun. Uh, you see that one of the taxmen 
its chest begins to sort of like come apart, and another tax man just steps up and grasps its shoulders from behind, uh, and it begins to like fuse into its brethren in front of it as the engine speeds up. Dwiomer steps over to you and rushes towards the engine in the center of the room. The astral lay right. What? She begins to interact. She begins to interact with glyphs, uh, and you see in a corner a tiny model of the lay rudder, a just ever so small recreation of the machine in the anterior chamber. And above the engine, you see uh, light fills the chamber. Dwi Armor says, Architect Arcane, we are reading a signature. 0 0.504, 0 0.508, 0 0.512, 0 0.516, 0 0.530, 0 0.548. Um, and you see that uh, the lay rudder in your hand surrounds you. Light, energy. One of the three ley lines that converges on ancient Toramunda, on Kath Moira, which you are an hour or two away from being directly over. Ley lines are invisible. It's pure energy of Exandria that flows, the veins of magic, the stuff of creation. Nidus, you behold as the spirit itself of the world is rendered visible and realize you are standing in the bloodstream of the cosmos. <laughs> I think Nidus just hands up, tears falling down his face. <laughs> it's beautiful! <laughs> <laughs> it's truly incredible! <laughs> I'm gonna move my arcane ward over him in that moment. <laughs> the dream of the dream of a cabin boy deckhand taken aboard a pirate ship to look at a flying city and to say one day I could be at the helm of a great working of magic. You watch the beating heart of your world flow magically through this room. And as the bow finishes spinning, a rod of pure gold slides into the light and the stone dome closes. The spinning stops and the engine pulses, mirroring the heartbeat of your world. Silvery white light with a feeling of warmth, heartbeat that matches the feeling of being inside the cradle of life. The miniature lay rudder in your hand, the engine of the anterior chamber just outside that the navigators use to pilot the city around Exandria. A small little gem lights up on its exterior and the new engine that you have created. The astral layrite mirrors that gem. <clears throat> yeah, I'm uh, looking at my smart home. Looking at your smart home? iPad. Just on yes, the nest. Yes. Just on the nest, yeah, I'm looking at all the, <laughs> the ring cams. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, a Hadmadad walked down this hallway it was not in the livery of the Golden Scythe. Mm -hmm. It walked down, it walked down this hallway and never came back out. It never came back for the whole party up to this current moment as you're recording. You do a quick scan of the hallway, there's no Hadmadad anywhere, but you see just the corner from where one of your divine students can catch it, the Hadmadad opening the door to this room. Right. And that Hadmadad had come as a porter carrying a gift of Dean Lycretia Hollow. Wait, wait, wait. 
<laughs> Wait. <laughs> the walk sign is on. <laughs> carrying a gift of DNA. Wait. Uh, just, so when Lycrecia okay. Hollow showed up, she had a Hodmadod with her carrying yes. a gift. That Hodmadod put the gift down, and being a Hodmadod that no one would care to follow or look at that much, wandered, <laughs> wandered off, walked into this room, and that's the last you see of it, and you're in this room, and it's mm-hmm. not in here. But there was an invisible cultist in here. And that was the one because I caught out of the corner of my eye when I was doing my um, like detect thoughts, and it went. Poof. No, different one. That different one's one. that one's still disanimated. That one disanimated. If invisibility is a second level spell, and disguise self is a first level spell, mm-hmm. that cultist was disguised as a Hodmadod and walked in here, and then when he got into the room, cast invisibility on himself and was waiting for the right moment, but the right moment never came because he got his throat slit by the senior sight warden. We got got by cantrips, baby. We got got by cantrips! <laughs> you hate to see Fundamentals, it. you guys. Fundamentals. <laughs> wow. As all of you stand from your seats at the ivy table, outside, you hear, you do this. <gasps> oh, oh, dude, no! The fireworks extravaganza's oh, begun! No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> the fireworks extravaganza! The extravaganza started! Uh, and that's where we're gonna take our break, folks. We'll uh, come back after the break. <laughs> this mini series is too stressful. I'm canceling it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Valedictine, can I speak with you for a moment and put a hand on her neck? And begin to tap a somatic component to a modify memory spell. Wow! Uh, mm. On her neck. Wow! Uh, as she goes in, you look at Madara's eyes looking out, and you see in her memory a bit of magic. A spell, some kind of dangerous spell, something crackling, something that that you recognize. Is about to break invisibility. Like the, the invisibility that Lycrecia cast on herself was low level, the kind of thing that an attack or a spell gets rid of, right? Uh, the invisibility was about to fade because Lycrecia was about to do something deadly. And then you see and hear Pervon as Loquacious and Xerxes run out. And because they ran out, Lycrecia killed Stops. the spell. Damn, they were going to take wow. a shot. I saved someone's life today. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> don't tell him. <laughs> Please don't <laughs> tell him. I was there too, and I said champion, which stopped him. Uh, <laughs> yes. uh, and then you watch as Lycrecia, uh, in the memory, well, now, now you're past the memory, but you remember the interaction that Xerxes and Qua- Loquacious described, which was their presence in front of Pervon Sewell up until the moment that he vanished because they did not leave his side until he teleported away from the city. You guys changed canon. <laughs> you guys saved the future of Exandria. We heroes. <laughs> no one tell them. It's been a great mini campaign. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we played for, right? <laughs> This is going to be a to whom it may concern. I'm going to cast Fireball. Yes! <laughs> That's what I would have yeah. done. Uh, hey, you know what? If I have a direction, I know how to <laughs> yeah. get a concentration check. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, hell yeah, go ahead and roll damage. Or actually, uh, so sorry. Deck You're, save against a 20. Damn. Amazing. 20? Level 14. Um, let me ask a question That's to you. Ferocious. Um, so uh, you go ahead and drop a fireball. Um, as you drop a fireball, you get hit with a counterspell. Oh. Uh, your construct can go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and it's a high enough counterspell where it just kills the fireball. Well, fireball's third level. Right. This was technically upcast before. Oh, was it? Yeah. I'll go ahead and roll in that case. I'll be very fair-minded. It's fine. Don't worry about it. No, Sorry. no, 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 no. I'll go ahead and roll. Um, we'll, make, we'll leave it up to the dice. Make a uh, roll. Make a roll. Make a roll. While we make still can. Uh, hell yes. Uh, here we go. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to roll this in front of the board, actually, because I like that, and that feels fun to me. Um, feels fun to you? Feels fun to me to roll in front it of the board. Feels fun to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our friend here 
needs. Ooh, Ooh, get out of here. Isn't yeah. that fun? Uh, our friend here needs an 11 or higher to overcome your fireball. Oh. A 10 oh. fails by one. I oh, think yeah. it's on a 12. Oh my God. Go ahead. Side rolling on that. Go ahead and roll damage. All right. There you go. Still that's need like, a deck that's save from him. Yeah. Uh, Jesus. Good shit. Okay, let's play a beautiful yeah. game. Those are all real good. These let's are very play a whole beautiful game. game. <laughs> Let us play a beautiful <laughs> game. <laughs> Is that correct? 41. Yeah. 41 yeah. points of fire damage. Good job! 41 points. Good job! So this dude's got to make a DC 20 constitution save? Yeah, no thanks. Even shit up. Okay. Well, let's be fair, he still has to make the deck save to like not take half damage. Oh, he quite failed. The okay, deck save. <laughs> I was just trying he, to. I nice. hit him that one back here on that deck oh, save. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, okay, we're going to roll again. This is a 19 or 20 on the die, or he drops concentration. 14. 14. Not going to get the job done. Um, uh, you <laughs> lay down uh, this fireball, uh, and Magister Micah Cormorant oh, appears. He's a bit, bit, bit. Um, <laughs> his, uh, his, you see, he's he has a bunch of incredible Evoker Arcanotech gear. <laughs> As you deal, how much? Forty-four. How much? Forty-one. Forty-one. Wow. Hachi machi. Um, Hachi machi. Uh, so, uh, uh, Pesha, you walk in. Uh, Clock the direction, and they're like, Arcane, it's been a minute. Look, they think I'm just constantly holding concentration on stuff that keeps the city afloat. I get very mad! <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, a perfect casting of Fireball, uh, such that the the summoning of it, it's, it's, it's so spherical, what a round ball of fire. <laughs> Technically perfect, as everything Laren does is, boom, uh, Magister appears horrifically burned and screaming as greater invisibility drops. Uh, 18. 18 and definitely hits, he's already 19. burned his reaction on a counterspell. Cool. 18 and 19. Um, Plus four. What is a D eight? Oh god, I'm so nervous. Seven, eight, see, sixteen plus twenty six points of bludgeoning damage. Whoa! What? Whoa! Yes. Yeah. What does he add to smack? Uh, it's a D eight plus four plus a spell's level of Brennan, bludgeoning Brennan, damage. Brennan's yeah, great. per slam Brennan's attack, Brennan. he does two. <laughs> Um, Magister Cormorant appears on the verge of casting Chain Lightning, and instead you burn him half to death, and your construct punches his chest so hard that it breaks all of his ribs, oh. uh, smashes his heart and organs into the wall behind him, and he is dead. Oh! That's it? That's all she wrote, folks. 66 oh. hit points. Let's go! Oh my god. Damn it. Thank you. Oh, you. Yeah. you Holy fuck. This man is beautiful. He, he bears in passing almost a resemblance, if it can be said, to Evandrin. Oh, why'd you do that? Why I knew you were gonna say that. What does that mean, though? I can't help but his name just falls out of my mouth, Evandrin. What the fuck? I. I don't look the same to everybody. Oh. Oh. They said before, before it all went wrong, they said I was the most beautiful of them all. You were. But as well you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and so I sometimes look like the most beautiful face Mortals have seen. Why does he look like me? <laughs> he looks at you and says, Avandrin. That's the name you just said. Yeah. That was your love, yes. It was. Why do you remind me of him? Only you could answer that. I never know who I'm going to look like to people. <sighs> Is this a trick? Are you playing with me? 
people often think I'm tricking them and I never have anything to say to that. What can you say to someone when they think that you're always going to trick them? I promise. No. I don't know of Andrin, but he must have been a very good man because you know, he's not in my realm. Let's get you cleaned up. <laughs> what? I, I have known only darkness for so long, and even before that, no one has shown me kindness. That's gonna change, and that's a damn shame. Many of us were already hated. Many of us already were seen as something worse, something abominable, but that, those stories, those things that shaped that, they were aided or egged on or pushed forward by the others. And in that time of pain and sorrow, they then stepped forward and gave more gifts. They, they gave magic, the primordials, they were giving the ability to shape reality to the things that they had used their ability to shape reality to shape. We had already lent on the hospitality of the primordials enough. We had lent on it enough. And we stepped in and said, the game has gone on too far. The primordials rose up against them and, and the prime deities, as they called themselves, stepped in to fight them, to double down on their overreach. Our promises were to the primordials, and we were called betrayers! I, I lay my hand on his chest. Easy. <laughs> I have been burning for so long. They used you. They did. And I'm sorry for that. I can help you. You say you know me. When the time comes and you step from this void into our world, don't you forget me. Don't you forget the kindness that we're capable of, because we're your children, too. We are made of the same stuff that what you initially created, we come from the same thing. And if you remember the stories as well as you seem to, then you know that at some point you turned your pain on us. They used you and then you used us to get back at them. I have a son that's not of my blood, but that is my son. I met Evandrin when he was just an infant and I held that boy in my arms and I fell in love with him. I am his father, but he is not of my blood. And in that same way, we are your children. Please remember that. Don't take your pain out on us. Spare us. And I will help you. I will help you confront those that did this to you. Slowly rising up as the city begins to descend, um, you walk through um, this neighborhood, uh, and as you are walking, uh, you hear a voice speak out. Ah! The Ring of Brass, uh, and Lycretia Hollow uh, turn, uh, looks at you, uh, says. Looks at us? She's. She's in front of us? Not just her. 
You look around at the rooftops around you. I'm going to need everyone here to roll initiative. <laughs> oh my oh. god. <laughs> and that's all for this episode oh. of oh. Beyond Limited Calamity. Tune in no. next week. No. And we'll see. We're going to kill this woman. We're going to kill this woman. <laughs> what did you do? What did you do? What is happening?